Welcome to this week in baseball player profiles as we continue our high school rivalry with Coach Burr from Capen and Coach Ebright from Bishop Carroll. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Hey, thanks for coming in. I know it's snowing outside and it's a, a cold day, so I appreciate you taking some time and coming up. It feels uh, like baseball season. Yeah. It's almost there, right? Yeah. Just as soon as baseball season gets here, we get this. Um, so we're going to start off with you, Coach Burr. Tell us about your coaching background. Uh, whew, um, I was at Northwest coming out of college, uh, Northwest High School, and I was there for three years as an assistant, and then uh, my wife and I moved to Texas, and she was working on her master's down there, and I was an assistant down there at Crowley High School. Probably one of the best experiences I had. Um, and then came back to Northwest as the head coach there for four years. Uh, all my kids were going to end up going to Capon, so when the, that opportunity came open, I took the head coaching job at Capon for four years. Uh, when we had our fourth kid, I backed off a little bit and gave it up for several years. Uh, Steve Linhart took it over, did an awesome job with it, and uh, it worked out perfectly that he was able to coach his kids. And then as mine were getting back into high school, I was able to take it back over. So uh, this is my fourth year back at Fourth Cape. year back. Yep. Okay. Coach Ebright? Well, uh, I think this is starting my 23rd year uh, as head coach of Bishop Carroll. I did two years as an assistant. Uh, but before that, you know, um, I, you know, I had a business degree out of college, so had a little bit of a life in the private sector for a while, but still played like in the men's league, player manager for a while, uh, <laughs> won the, you know, Texas State NABA championship. And I just, you know, I wanted to stay in the game, so I ended up going back to college uh, to get my teaching. Um, and, you know, I thought I'd teach history and be a baseball coach. and. Uh, Moved to Wichita, Kansas, didn't know a soul. So uh, played in the men's league, got to know some people in the community of baseball here, and uh, through some you know good connections uh, like Coach Dukes, and uh, he let me help him at Friends. So I was a college assistant my first year here in Wichita, and uh, then moved over to Carroll as an assistant, and uh, things fell into place for me. So. Um, just hoping to keep it rolling for a few more years. See what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, college background? You guys play college ball? I actually played college football. College football? At Harding University in Searcy, Arkansas. Okay. And Charlie? Uh, played uh, junior college ball at Chipola in North Florida, uh, mm -hmm. in the Panhandle Conference there. I did a redshirt year, um, which really was big for development for me. Uh, I was kind of a late bloomer. And uh, then finished at Georgia Southwestern college at the time, university now. It was an NAI at the time, now they're a D2. Uh, finished up four years of college baseball there. It's kind of, you know, best years, you know, of your life, you kind of think. Right. You know, uh, certainly enjoyed it. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, start with you here on this question, uh, Charlie. The effects last season um, of COVID for your players uh, and your seniors not being able to play. Yeah. Um, well, thankfully, the ones that wanted to play college baseball were able to find an opportunity, and so far, so good. It looks like for those those four, uh, for the others, you know, it's just you know tough. Uh, even though they weren't playing on playing at the next level, having that taken from them, and you know what Ryan and I were able to put together last summer was maybe a little bit of uh, solace, uh, but it's just really tough, and it's you know we're still seeing the impact of it right now uh, with not knowing our team's very well going into the season um, and not really knowing the competition at all either. I was like, I don't know who's going to be good. I, you know, um, so it's, uh, that's an interesting dynamic and uh, I mean, we're all in the same boat. So um, yeah, it was, it was a really tough year. Um, you know, it's depressing. Uh, I'm glad the kids got to play in the summer and I got to get out and watch you know, some of our kids play. And, that was that was that was great, you know, um, for those guys in the game, and uh, so hopefully we get back to normal this spring. Oh, hey, Coach Burr, uh, crushing. Um, you know, obviously I've got a son that plays for us, and we were sitting in the sitting in the living room and expecting the governor to say, "Hey, we're going to back off to April 6, April 13th, like Oklahoma had, and, and say we'll try to pick it back up." Then I'm thinking, "Yeah, we'll probably be able to play for a month, maybe a month and a half." And then when she says it's all over, just uh, heartbreaking, crushing, you know, you didn't have words for it at the time. You had never been through it. You didn't know how to handle it. And um, we tried to, uh, every week we had a Cape and Baseball Zoom um, and uh, on our Google Classrooms and just tried to keep the kids back engaged. But 
you could see it. It was it was really tough. It was really tough on the mental health side for everybody, but especially high school kids. And there's a lot of people who say, oh well, you know, uh, you just you get through quarantine, you watch some movies, you do this and that. But those people aren't the ones who are losing the once in a lifetime experience. Uh, we've got people. We've got kids. You know. Almost everybody, you look back at high school or college or something, and those are seminal moments you only get once. And those, they, a lot of those kids had it ripped away. And so I, I feel worse for our juniors and seniors in high school over the last two years than anybody. Yeah. Um, tell us about your expectations for this season. Really excited. Um, we've got probably 12 seniors. Um, it's a good group. You know, like I said, my son's a senior, so I've known these kids since many of them were five, six years old. Um, I think I've coached all, any of them that lived, well, almost all of them that lived in Wichita growing up at some point or another. Um, so really excited about that. This is the first year we really feel like we have four legitimate classes. Uh, we've always kind of had a hole in our roster because we had a couple of small classes go through. But um, we've, got, we've got more depth than we've ever had now. Whether that depth is enough to do what we want to do, we'll find out. But uh, we're really excited about it. Charlie, your expectations this year? Well, again, um, just not being able to play last year, um, I, I have a lot of question marks going in. Uh, I have a strong senior class, have 10, um, have four that have signed to play next year, um, and two that are going to play you know, college football. Um, so got some good athletes. Um, that we're going to have to get ready that first month and, and improve through the year. We have a strong sophomore class. Um, I'm excited to see those guys back out there. Um, I, I would see there's a possibility of three, four, five, six of them being contributors this year. So I'm hoping to see you know nice gains with them um, on the mound. Return you know Jory Faber, uh, who's you know. Uh, he's been throwing for us since he was a freshman, so just knowing having a guy like that, you're going to be able to put out there and uh, keep you in a ball game, whoever you're playing. Uh, building the staff from there was something we were going to have to do last year that I never got the opportunity to do. Um, so we have an idea of you know a two, three, four um, on the mound, and maybe some position players, you know, coming into the bullpen and stuff like that. So. Um, I think we'll be very competitive. I think I'll be able to put, you know, nine, ten guys on the field that uh, should be able to compete with anybody, I think. So um, I'm excited to get to work on it, though. Okay. Uh, who are some of your top players? Well, I mentioned Jory. Uh, he'll get to probably swing the bat a little bit this year, too. Um, you know, the other ones that have signed, Paul Schoenfeld's a really solid outfielder for us, can play any of the three outfield, left-handed stick. Um, We've also got uh, Drake Unrine, um, who can catch, play first base, uh, kind of middle, he's a middle of the order guy, hopefully have a really big year for us. Um, you've got uh, guys like uh, Oscar Gallardo, who can play short, third, uh, pitch, uh, he's going to go to Pratt. And um, then, you know, Aiden Needles, who probably the most experienced position player we got coming back from two years ago. Uh, he caught for us as a sophomore. Um, I don't, I don't see him catching at this point, but he could play infielders or go play center field, play anywhere on the field. Um, so I'm excited about him. Um, so those are kind of our top, you know, five, six guys that you know will be our leaders and uh, hopefully bring everybody else along with them. Coach Burr, what do you got? Uh, we had about six or seven kids start as sophomores two years ago. Um, didn't have a whole lot of seniors at that point, so we had some good experience coming back. Uh, Tiger Jones has played shortstop since he stepped on campus for us. Is he still there? He's still there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's still there. Um, and uh, Andrew Jamino, outfielder and pitcher. Uh, Brandon Burrs, an outfielder. Alex Roach at first. Keenan Wynn at, at uh, uh, catcher. Jacob Steffen, middle infield. Um, we got, a, like I said, we got 12 seniors, and I'm probably leaving some guys out, but. We've got a, a lot of guys. Max Crowd has actually had the probably the best timing for Chom Tommy John surgery in history because he was going to miss last year because he had surgery on his elbow and uh, ended up not missing anything more than anybody else did. But he's coming back after pitching as a sophomore. So we've got, we've got a lot of guys. Um, what I'm really excited about, we're, 
we're probably going to have to probably inter squad more than we've ever inter squatted. Uh, just because we're going to have to find out who can really play because we've got competition in positions. There's been some years where like, yeah, we got to pluck this kid up. He's probably not ready, but we need to stick him out at second base or something like that. And, and I don't think we have that. It's kind of the opposite. we got two or three guys spot fighting for some spots, and so it's going to be pretty exciting. That's good. Um, so this rivalry, Cape and Carroll, holy war. Tell me about the rivalry. Charlie and I get along great. Uh, <laughs> Especially off the field. Especially off the field. Uh, but we are both, I mean, so competitive. Our kids have grown up playing against each other and with each other. I mean, there's probably probably eight kids that played together on a summer team, on Ray Beatty's summer team last year. So, I mean, these kids know each other so well. Um, it's always it's always a great ball game. Um, you know, they're, they've been the best program consistently over the last 15 years in the City League. And so, you know, we, we strive to be as good as they are. And, and when we get out there and compete with them, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, we had an exhibition game this summer, but there were some times where it got, it got pretty, pretty exciting at times. So, um, I mean, I got a lot of respect for them. I mean, they're kids. They've got awesome kids. And, um, you know, these kids he's naming – I've seen them growing up, and right. you, you've seen them do so much, and, and it's just two schools that are just so ingrained within the community, and they just know each other so well. Right. Your interpretation of this rivalry? Yeah, I mean, shoot, you know, it's, it's tough um, because it's one of those games you play, and it doesn't matter how good either team is that year. You throw out, you know, you throw out the record, it just, and Capen always plays as tough, and um, and, I, you know, psychology of the game is, okay, well, it's Cape and well, I have to try harder. Yeah. So, you don't, you know, it's got, you're dealing with high school kids. Uh, and then usually, I mean, we get along pretty good. And um, the players, the coaches generally, and sometimes the fans, you know, get that going, you know. Um, there's been years where, you know, the fans get real chippy and stuff. and. That kind of bleeds onto the field and stuff like that, uh, but it's been it's been a healthy rivalry and good competition. You know you're going to get it this year. Sounds like Ryan's got a really you know good club to work with, and so uh, I think our you know it'll be a great matchup where people hopefully people can come out and watch and um, you know see how how the how the chips fall when it's done. Yeah. So last question here about the rivalry. Give me your favorite memory of a game in a rivalry. Jeez, oh, <laughs> gotta have one. Well, I don't, I, there was a—I I forget what, whether it was a regional game or just just one of our singles or something. Um, a couple walk-off, you know, situations uh, that went into extra innings. I, I remember AJ Peters. Uh, you know, had come up, I think, in the seventh or something and had a chance to win the ball game. And, you know, he, he failed. And uh, it seems like he came back around again the following inning. And I knew he was scuffling and, uh, you know, just told the kid, hey, just because he's trying to hit the ball up the middle, doing what he's taught and stuff like that. I said, look, just pull the ball, just hit the ball. And, uh, you know, next pitch, boom, base hit, you know, guy scores, uh, won the game. Uh, that's that's one that sticks out kind of to me. Um, I'm sure there's other ones. I, you know, I don't have a great memory. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Burr, what do you got? Uh, we, 2009-ish maybe, somewhere in there, uh, they had really put it on us in the doubleheader during the regular season, and we had run out of pitching in it. I mean, they pounded us. And our kids, to their credit, really came back, and we ended up beating them in the regional final that year. Um, we had a really incredible day from Aaron Boswell. Um, just, I mean, he in, in the first game of the, uh, the regional, he hit a grand slam and uh, and pitched a, a shutout. Second game, he catches, hits a three-run homer to tie it up against him, and then we end up winning that game that year and and making it to the state semifinals and it just. It was a great game. It was kind of one of those games nobody needed to lose. Right. But, you know, at some point it has to. And, and uh, we, it was it was a fun game, one that I'll always remember. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you guys coming in today, taking yep. a few, few yep. minutes out of your day. And uh, 
discussing your teams, and, and I wish you guys the best of luck. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. That concludes this week in baseball uh, rivalries with Coach Burr from Capen and Coach Ebright from Carroll. Next up on the rivalries will be Coach Jordan from Circle and Coach Butterfield from Mandel. Thank you.